On the previous chapter of the complete timeline of Fallen of Albaz, we reached the desert of Golgonda with Fallen of Albaz and Ecclesia. Lost and afraid, they are looking for a mechanic from the Tri Brigade tribe called Kit. They discovered that the Spring Ants tribe are not so welcoming and they suffer a few bombardments out of their missiles, but at the end of the day, after Albaz transforms into a new fusion form, they make peace and start living together. While in the capital, Maximus has completed his army of 666 saints and is now able to begin the ritual that spawns the Despias. A hole opens in the sky, Fleur de Lis armor is haunted by an evil spirit, and the theater of the Despia rises within the city. There are 178 cards in the Fallen of Alba's lore. 178 cards that depict a part of the story, the characters involved, and allow us to visually see what the world of Fallen of Albaz looks like. In this video series, I'm gonna be going through the entire Fallen of Albaz lore and story, card by card, showing you exactly how the cards look, how their effects affect the story, and eventually how we got to where we are in the story today. The Dogmatica capital is forever changed. Maximus's ritual has spawned the Despias across the city, and with the theater rising from the ground, the skyline of the city is forever changed. Maximus is no longer, as he has also succumbed to the ritual that he has spawned and is now taking the form of the Dramaturge of Despia. Very similar to Maximus, but with longer nails and some wings. And of course, Dramaturge shares the same stats as Maximus does, just flipped around. And similar to Maximus, he's also allergic to monsters from the extra deck, as whenever a monster leaves the extra deck and is summoned to the field, Maximus can target it and negate its effects until the end of the turn. And when it's used as fusion material, it can summon itself back. The Dogmatica Nexus has also turned into a Despia statue and is now the Despian Proskinian, which, instead of being able to banish the fusion synchro Xyz and Link monsters from the graveyard to summon itself, it can now bring them back from the dead. And of course, Fleur de Lis armor is completely engulfed with Despian magic and has turned into the Despian Queridus, that can basically zero out any monster that is not fusion, essentially spreading the magic all around. And Aluber is also taking charge with Branded in Red, as we can see the ritual in the sky is opening, Aluber's wings are forming, and Aluber, of course, transforming into Masquerade, the Blazing Dragon, his first of a few dragon forms across the story. And Branded Opening is the beginning of this chapter's story, as we see the Tri Brigades fighting the Despias in control of the city. The city has completely transformed and the Despias are all over the place and we can see Shreg trying to hold on to dear life in this battle. And of course this card summons a Despia monster. This is what spawns the Despias in the city. Back in the desert, something extremely important to the story begins to happen. Branded in White is the first fusion spell for Fallen of Albaz and it basically fuses from hand or field by using one dragon, but if using Fallen of Alba specifically, the materials can also be banished from the graveyard. And this is the first time Albaz manages to actually control his transformation and transforms into Albion, the branded dragon. And the reason why he transforms is because in the great gold sea sand of Golgonda appears a serpent, and it is none other than the supreme sovereign serpent of Golgonda, the ruler of this desert, which gains 3000 attack if the great sand sea gold Golgonda is on the field. In Screams of the Branded, we can see Albion charging towards the serpent, and in Judgment of the Branded, we can see the serpent being hit by a great wave of yellow lightning. In Spring Ant's Interluder, which is the next card in the story, we can see what spawned that lightning, and we can see three mysterious figures on top of a cliff, standing above a few confused spring ants. And those figures are immediately revealed. It's the Irish Sword Soul, which is of course Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, and the Golden Sword Soul, a duo made up of Theo and Aiden from the Dogmatica tribe. But the danger is not over yet. In the art of Branded Bond, we can see Ecclesia reaching out to the flaming dragon 
as it sheds its skin. And we also find out the new form of Ecclesia taking in the desert, which is of course the incredible Ecclesia that can now share its powers between the Sword Soul tribe with the Golden Sword Soul and of course the Iris Sword Soul that can special summon themselves from the deck. And Ecclesia can also summon Fallen of Albas from the deck, which connects the two forever. And in the Art of Branded Bond, we can see Albion shedding its orange coat to become Albion the Shrouded Dragon, which is always considered Fallen of Albaz while in the field or in the graveyard and can send branded spells and traps or Fallen of Albaz itself from the deck to bring itself back into the deck and draw one card. Essentially, this is another base form of Fallen of Albaz, and it's not going to be the last one. And we get a reveal of the final Tri Brigade member, up until now at least, we'll get another one later in the story and it's tri brigade bearbrum the rampant rampager this is of course kit but with a new machine she's created in the desert with the spring hands and it's also a link monster and it's probably one of the better ones as it can summon multiple tri brigade monsters from being banished and of course searches for tri brigade revolt which is the core card of the deck and now we actually leave the desert onto a new plane and this is basically the story being told from iris sword soul's perspective and we are heading over into the sword soul summit not before branded in high spirits which concludes this part of the story as we see ecclesia flying on the wings of albion the shrouded dragon away from the desert as everybody cheers and of course this card can search any fallen of albas card from the deck as long as you manage to combine a monster in your hand with another monster of the same type, being fusion level 8 and having 2500 attack or defense, sending them to the graveyard and then searching that card. But in the Sword Soul Summit, we are met with our new protagonists, Taya, Moye, Longyuan, Changzheng, and the two leaders of the tribe, Chengying and Qishao. In the art of Sword Soul Emergence, we see Theo, Aiden, and the wounded Fleur de Lis arriving at the Sword Soul Summit. And this card searches any Sword Soul monster. We can see the Great Sword Soul Summit, which is a revive spell for the Sword Soul tribe. And we see the Sword Soul Assessment Trap card, which depicts the leader of the tribe assessing whether Ecclesia's intentions are pure of heart. And with the effect, we can kind of understand what that ritual entails. Target one face-up monster you control, banish up to five Sword Soul cards and or worm monsters from your graveyard. And if you do, that monster gains 300 attack for each card banished this way. And as we can see, Ecclesia is gaining those Sword Soul powers, which is pretty cool. And we're also introduced to the Ice Jades. We have Acti, Tenola, Tremora, Adrian, Cosmoclor, and the Ice Jade creation Kingfisher, all of which are members of the Ice Jade society that live deep within the Sword Soul Summit and are the ones who give the Sword Soul their powers. And in the art of Ice Jade Cradle, that lets you add an Ice Jade monster from your deck to your hand with the different names than cards you already control or in your graveyard, we can see the Ice Jades taking care of a wounded Fleur de Lis. In the last episode, we talked about Fleur's armor in the art of White Knight of Dogmatica being burned by Despian Magic. We can finally see what actually happened to Fleur herself, and we can see the wounds inflicted on her by Maximus's ritual and the Ice Jades healing her. And this is why in the art of Sword Soul Emergence, we see the trio and of course the wounded Fleur de Lis so desperately trying to get to the Sword Soul Summit to heal their wounds. And lastly, in the Ice Jade part of the story, we can see the Ice Jade's note, Enion Cradle, which is the field spell that depicts the realm of the Ice Jades. It can add an Ice Jade from Grave or Banishment on activation. And in the art, we can also see in the bottom left corner, Ecclesia and Albion reaching the depth of the summit. And now we turn into the action with Sword Soul Blackout. This artwork depicts something rather disturbing with Longyuan opening the gates to the Despias to invade the Sword Soul Summit. Even though this card actually destroys cards by destroying your own worm monster, we can actually see Ad Libidum of Despia reaching inside of the Sword Soul Summit through a portal that seems very familiar. And in the art of Ice Jade Erosion that follows it, we can see Longyuan combining Moye swords with his own to turn into a new sinister form. And as you can see by the effect, you can target one face up card your opponent controls, destroy one Ice Jade monster you control, and if you do, you gain the targeted card's effects 
until the end of this turn. If a face-up water monster you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, you can add to your hand or special summon another Ice Jade from deck. And back in the capital, we get a swift image of what is happening there. It's a funeral procession. You can see the figures formerly from the Dogmatica tribe in the background depicted as very scary skulls. And of course, white relic of Dogmatica. A new sinister form of the former saint we've seen in the art of Dogmatica Genesis. But the battle in the summit begins. With the art of Sword Soul Strife, we can see the sinister form of Long Yuan charging into the leader of the Sword Souls tribe, Cheng Ying. And another invasion is beginning in the summit, which is depicted in the art of Branded Disciple, the continuous trap featuring a Luber's new winged form, Ecclesia and Albion the Shrouded Dragon, watching him invade the Ice Jade Cradle. Interestingly enough, in the effect of Branded Disciple, any effect of a monster with zero attack is negated once per turn if you control a Fiend fusion monster of level 8 or higher. Which means that if the effect of Quiridus, for example, has resolved and zeroed out the attack of your opposing monster, you can also use the Despion powers to negate their effects as well. This part of the story, we learn a little bit more about Aluber through his token, which is the next card in this set. It's Aluber the Dogmatic. It is not presented here as it is in the story. It's definitely not in the Ice Jade's note. It's actually behind a very beautiful stained glass window, probably somewhere in Dogmatica as the stained glass seemed to feature the symbol of the Dogmatica people. But this is the first time we see a Luber without his mask, and the token says, a thing separated from the abyss. It mocked the light and deceived the darkness. Extremely cryptic, like the Fallen of Albaz token, but I think this art is just so cool. Continuing to Branded Lost, one of the most important cards of the actual Branded deck, we can see a Luber tying up Albion in his weird strings of holes. And flashing back to the capital, we can see in Dogmatica Macabra, which is another ritual spell of the Dogmaticas, Theo, Aiden, and Iris going back to the capital to fight the Despias that remain. And they have actually been lured into that capital. Now, it's kind of interesting to see that this is, of course, a ritual card for Dogmaticas. You must also tribute monsters from hand or field or banish fusion or synchro monsters from the graveyard and of course using the powers of the dead is no news for despias but also if white knight of dogmatica and white relic of dogmatica are on the field you can then look at either player's extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard so the ritual is successful and it's more successful if the actual ritual has already been done as iris tries to fight the forces of dogmatica and we can see her striking Dramaturge with her yellow powers of lightning. In the art of branded banishment, we can actually see that Iris has been captured by the dragonic form of Despian Quertus. And it's also written by the white relic of Dogmatica, as we can see in the top right corner. And this, of course, brings back a Despia or fusion monster from the grave and then uses it to fusion summon again. And in Ice Jade Curse, which is one of my all time favorite artworks in the story, we can see the shattered body of Cosmoclore with the small Adrian next to it before she ascended into better and stronger forms. Now, the real battle and the real fusion begins and is about to end in the Ice Jade's note. In the Art of Branded Sword, we can actually see a new form of Fallen of Albas, Mirror Jade, combined with the Ice Jade powers, striking the new formed, striking the newly formed sinister Long Yuan. And Aluber, who is also nearby, transforms now into another dragon form of his own, Lubelion the Searing Dragon, which requires Fall of Albaz and a dark monster. But this is not Fall of Albaz fusing. This is actually Aluber fusing with Albaz's powers. So their powers begin to mix a little bit. And of course, with Mirror Jade and Lubelion finally in play, Branded Fusion is formed, and the two powers are just too strong to be separated, and they fuse together to create Alba Lanatus, the Abyss Dragon, which is the ultimate form of Alba's and Aluber's struggles. And this requires Fallen of Albaz and one or more dragon monsters. So in this case, it's Fallen of Albaz's new form, which is Mirror Jade, who's not a dragon, 
but Lupeleon is a dragon. So it's essentially a Luber and Albaz combined. And of course, this card cannot be used as fusion material because it's already a lore accurate fusion of two fusions. And of course, in the end phase, it can search a polymerization or a fusion normal spell from your deck to your hand signifying its importance. And on the surface we have the art of Branded Lost, we can see a very gruesome battle between the Despia forces invading the capital and the Sword Soul forces trying to protect it, of course led by the incredible Ecclesia who's swinging her hammer. This artwork is just a masterpiece. But the invasion is not over because in the artwork of Dogmatica Turgy we can see Dramaturge opening up a hole in the summit to show Ecclesia that they've captured her mentor, sister Iris, and that they have her in the capital, basically trying to lure Ecclesia back. And finally the fusion is broken and in the art of branded expulsion we can see Albaz being expelled from the Abyss Dragon's body. And this is actually a super lore accurate card because the effect of course is that it requires you to tribute a fusion monster and then target two monsters in either graveyard or banishment and special summon them one to each field, essentially signifying the Abyss Dragon breaking up and summoning Aluber and Albaz back into the world. But it is not the same Albaz that you've known. It's a new form of Albaz Albaz the Ashen. And Albaz the Ashen is, of course, Fallen of Albaz while on the field or in the graveyard, and it also gains attack for each of your Fallen level 8 fusion monsters that are in your graveyard. And this is the last card for this exciting chapter, and this is the height of the battle, because now Albaz is on his knees, he has seen what a Luber can do, and while Ecclesia and Albaz are lured back into the capital because of Iris's capture by Dramaturge, things are about to get really messy. And in chapter four, we're gonna be traveling with Kit into the land of Iron as she looks for a new weapon for the Tri Brigade to help win the war against the raging Despians. We'll also learn about a new electric power that came down from the heavens, the sprites, and see if eventually Kit can take over the Therions and win what she needs to build her new weapon. Thank you so much for joining for another episode. There are actually two more episodes in this series, so make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and comment down below, of course, what do you think about this part? Thank you so much for watching the complete timeline of Fallen Valbaz. I'll see you in the next chapter. Peace.